teach. Just the one in the King James Version of the Bible? I grew up Catholic. I don't use the King James Version of the Bible. I guess I'm wrong for that. I guess I'm going to hell for that. I don't believe that. The Pope doesn't believe that. I have a very good friend of mine. He's a Seventh-day Adventist. He thinks the Pope is the Antichrist. The nice Pope, Pope John Paul II. I don't know. Well, let me give you, uh, uh, let's see, how much time do I have left? About six minutes? Okay, plenty of time. We do observe microevolution. We can observe it. Just because macroevolution, we say, well, it takes longer time than we have to sit and observe it. We talk about empirical evidence. Oh, I want to talk about Mr. Hovind, or Dr. Hovind's challenge, too, by the way. Um, empirical evidence. Well, I'm sorry if it takes, you know, 100,000 years for something to change. I'm not going to live that long. In fact, unfortunately, we haven't been writing about things that long in order for us to actually have these kinds of observations. Well, give us 100,000 years. Come back then and, and check in, and I'm sure we'll have some good evidence for you. Can't do anything about that, folks. We can look at microevolution, and we can, we, can, we can decide that microevolution is simply a matter of accumulated change over time, and eventually it produces what we consider macroevolution. Let me show you something. How do you suppose it got to be if horses and donkeys are the same kind of animal that something got screwed up with their genes so that they can no longer produce after their own kind. How did that happen? Well, I think it's because the populations got isolated. Suppose there was a primitive horse kind. Let's not even talk about species. Okay? Microevolution says that there will be change over time. Macroevolution is just an accumulation of those changes such that you get something that can no longer reproduce with what it once was. It's that simple. Here's a little diagram. Two deans of a single species, two populations of a single species, if you will, separated by some kind of barrier, a water barrier. If you have organisms that can't cross a river and a river flows between them, it effectively isolates the two groups of populations. Put the horses on one side, the donkeys on the other, if you want to. Over time, microevolution happens to both of them. If we're willing to grant that microevolution can change somebody's teeth, why not somebody else's reproductive system? See, we can say that, well, it works on teeth, but it doesn't work on anything else. It works on everything, folks. Microevolution works on everything. Eventually, you've got enough change to where maybe their genes don't quite match up. The problem with humans and chimpanzees is that chimps have 48 chromosomes and humans have 46. If you did try to get a human and a chimpanzee to mate, God forbid, right, you couldn't produce anything because they have incompatible chromosomes. When the sperm and the egg get together, there's a chromosome left over and it happens to be a big one. It's an insurmountable challenge. It won't happen. Can't even do it in the laboratory. Not that we should try. Hopefully nobody's trying that. Okay? Two separate populations separate for long enough, different microevolutionary changes. All of a sudden, you get them back together, right? Somebody gets a farm and gets a horse and a donkey, puts them back together, and they can't produce after their own kind anymore because there's been a real genetic change, a microevolutionary change that's accumulated over time such that now it's a macroevolutionary change. Horses and donkeys and mules are different species, and I would argue they're also different kinds of animals. Let me finish up with a challenge. I saw this, you know. Hey, I'm like the rest of you. My mouth water. $250,000. Where's the criteria? Where does it say what kind of evidence I will accept? Well, one man tried to accept the challenge. Um, I'll ask Mr. Hovind if he's familiar with uh, Kevin Henke and Dr. Berend Vlarder-Ingerbrook, who's from a Scandinavian country. Pardon me for butchering his name. One of them said that the only evidence he was told would be accepted was for him to actually create a new universe. Well, that would prove both theories, wouldn't it? Because Kevin would be the creator. He created a whole new universe. I can't do that. Nobody could do that. What other kinds of evidence? So I'll ask Mr. Hovind to present, you know, 
what criteria he would accept for real scientific evidence, real empirical evidence of evolution. Give me a suite of things to choose from. Don't just give me one thing. Also, I, I checked out his website. You should check it out, by the way, www.drdino.com, I believe that's it. Because he goes into this. There's a panel of judges who will review the evidence. But see, they're real busy men, and they don't have time to answer facetious or silly questions, so he's not going to tell you who they are. Well, you know, if I have to take my time out of my life, however long it takes me, to get my evidence together and present it, I'd like to know who's going to review it. When I submit an article for publication in a scientific journal, I get a list of reviewers. I know who's reviewing my work. Sometimes I'll get comments back from them. I know ahead of time. Now, I trust that uh, Dr. Hovind here is an honorable man and wouldn't stack the deck against me. You know, I'd like to know who the six people are, or however many judges there are, uh, who they are and what their backgrounds are, whether or not they're creationists, whether or not they're evolutionists, you know, those kinds of things. You know, um, I was being facetious, but you know, I really will make that bet with anybody. It's the same kind of bet. I'll hold up my keys and I'll let go of them. If they don't hit the floor, you win my next uh, year's paycheck. Not quite $250,000, unfortunately, but you know, not an insignificant amount of money. If you're going to reject the theory of evolution, why not reject all scientific theories? They all must just be based on religion. After all, we can't see gravity, can we? It's about time for me to stop, so I'll go ahead and stop there. Thank you. All right, this will be the uh, rebuttal session, and then we'll go into the question and answer session, so it'll be exciting. Um, he mentioned that my quotes have the dot, dot, dot in there. That is very common. I mean, if you quoted the entire quote, it'd be, it'd be uh, horrendously long. And I challenge you to show me where any of my quotes in my seminar, and I use thousands of them, show me where they're not giving the true meaning of what the author said. You leave out extraneous words, that's common practice, and anybody who's quoting from, from uh, that, that, that would be ridiculous to say this is evidence, it, it seemed to be implying that I'm trying to misquote them, and evolutionists often accuse creationists of misquoting. Everything's documented right on the bottom of the screen. Look it up, show me where I'm wrong, where I'm not giving the true meaning. You mentioned about email debate, people wanting to debate me on email. I type about 12 words a minute with 18 mistakes. I get over 400 emails a day. I don't have time to get involved in a long email debate. I was home for 12 hours this week. I got in at three last night. I speak 700 times a year. I tell all the evolution, what they want to do is they want to eat up all of my time so I can't get out and speak to folks that really want to hear. They don't want to hear anyway. As far as not giving out the names of the judges, some uh, anonymous coward named Boudicca emailed me and I said, I shouldn't have answered him the first time because I always ignore anonymous mail. But he was, this was anonymous, and I saw emailed back and said, if you'll tell me your name, I'll be glad to answer all of your questions. He had 300 questions. He said, no, I refuse to give you my name. I said, well, then I'm sorry, I won't answer your questions. I don't, I've got nothing to hide. You've got my name, address, and phone number, and I'll give you a map to my house if you want. I have nothing to hide. See, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Well, Boudicca sent in what he said was evidence for evolution. It was ridiculous, but I sent it to the judges. I told him I'm going to send it to these guys. Boudicca right away wrote nasty, vile, filthy letters full of profanity to these judges. And I said, fellas, hey, I'm sorry. I won't let this happen again. Uh, if somebody sends in some real evidence, well, here's what happens. I get probably five or six emails a week from someone saying what Dr. Hartman said a few minutes ago. Well, if I knew who the judges were, what they're trying to say is, I don't really want to give you my evidence because I don't have any, but boy, I'm going to pick on you for your offer. They, pick it, they strain at gnats in the offer of quarter million dollars rather than just send the evidence. I would like you tonight, Dr. Hartman, to give the audience here the best evidence you have for evolution, for macroevolution, the best evidence you've got. Let's not waste time with all the little stuff. Please give us the best. I have over 500,000 videos out there in circulation that we